I'm uh, Sia Danishman. I'm a professor of urology at uh, USC. So uh, these are my disclosures. Um, the relevant disclosures uh, are uh, Photocure and uh, Pacific Edge for this uh, uh, lecture. So why do we need urinary markers? Um, because cystoscopy misses tumors. Uh, we miss CIS, we miss upper tract tumors. Um, cystoscopy is invasive at the end of the day and, and uh, cytology is inconsistent. We miss up to 20% of high grade tumors. Uh, most of the low grade diseases actually uh, will be negative. And, and, and then we also have this problem with atypical cytology where 10 to 15%, depending on, on where you are, uh, will uh, uh, be atypical and we're not sure where, where to go with it. There are lots of potentials for biomarkers for detection of cancer, whether it's from the blood and you have everything from uh, circulating tumor cells, uh, cell-free DNA, proteins, mRNA, microRNA, exosomes. Uh, then of course, uh, lots of different opportunities uh, within the urine itself from exfoliated cells. Um, and that's, that's where urine cytology is based and Eurovision tests and immunocyte uh, to protein uh, 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 detection with NMP22, BTA and UBC test, and then uh, mRNA uh, with a CX bladder and expert bladder cancer tests. Uh, there are some studies with microRNA and uh, most recently uh, with DNA, uh, looking at epigenetic markers of, of bladder cancer and some studies with exosomes uh, as well. So uh, what are our most commonly used diagnostics right now? Cytology, of course, it, it, it identifies disease. Uh, uh, these, the source materials actually hold cells. It is somewhat subjective, a high rate of atypical or suspicious findings. Uh, the Eurovision, typically the uh, FISH test is a reflex to atypical cytology but also relies on whole cells that have been sloughed off the tumor. Uh, but it does give you a quantitative uh, number of cells with aneuploidy. Um, there are moderate rates of non-diagnostic tests. Uh, it, it, it sensitivity is somewhat poor. Uh, and again, sensitivity of cytology can be poor as well. Here's a, a recent study uh, that was uh, published a few years ago on, on evaluating fish af, uh, to, to assess progression after BCG treatment. And this was a validation study uh, from a previous uh, uh, um, uh, uh, study looking at uh, uh, the value of fish uh, in, in this particular setting by Ashish Kamat from MD Anderson. Um, so the, the positive Eurovision test after BCG was associated with a threefold increased risk of recurrence. But the sensitivity again was 36%, specificity 76%, positive predictive value 40%. So the conclusion is it's possibly useful in risk stratifying patients entering clinical trials, but individual patient decision is pretty limited uh, due to the uh, low predictive, positive predictive value. Uh, this was the uh, phase three uh, flexible blue light study uh, that we conducted uh, across the US um, for the FDA approval of this. And, and in it, uh, urine cytology was uh, evaluated as well. This was a central cytology. You can see of all the CIS that was detected uh, with the blue light technology, none of the patients had uh, positive cytology. Uh, two had suspicious cytology, three atypicals, uh, but six were completely negative and, and two were either unsatisfactory or, or, or missing. So you can see that again, uh, uh, when it's positive, it's great. Uh, we, we, we have a very high positive uh, uh, predictive value, but, but uh, a lot of times we just don't get what we need from, from cytology. These are the current FDA approved urinary biomarkers for detection of bladder cancer. Um, not all markers have to be FDA approved or uh, do need to be CLIA certified to be covered. Uh, but you can see uh, that uh, BTA and NMP22 uh, urocyte have been around for a long time. They all suffer from the same issue of uh, relatively low sensitivity and, and uh, not high enough specificity either. Um, you saw that uh, a statement there about, uh, th this is from the AUA guidelines, that clinicians should not use bi urinary biomarkers in place of cystoscopic evaluation. And that was the 2016 AUA guidelines. Uh, with a fairly strong recommendation. So we're not ready yet to, to replace uh, cystoscopy. Looking at the NCCN guidelines, uh, the most recent one for, for high risk, for surveillance of high risk non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, you can see that urine cytology every three months in consideration is made for urinary uh, tumor markers uh, with a category 2B. 
Now the question is, you know, can we expand that into low and intermediate risk patients and perhaps uh, 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 skip some cystoscopies, at least in the lower uh, risk patients? So should we use it for every patient? Absolutely not. I don't think it's recommended by any of the guidelines. We certainly don't recommend it. Um, don't send cytology when you're looking right at a large papillary tumor. I tell my residents all the time who, who just have this uh, uh, knee-jerk response to sending your cytology and, and you're looking straight at tumor, you're going to get pathology. Uh, atypical findings, however, I think are, are really the unmet need. Uh, this is CX uh, bladder as a genomic test is optimized for not just detection, but management of urothelial carcinoma. It has great utility in both hemat hematuria uh, evaluation. Uh, there are three different tests called triage, detect, and monitor. Triage is optimized to rule out low-risk patients, uh, patients who you think are low risk of um, having urothelial carcinoma. Uh, CX bladder detect is a detection test. Uh, it's either rule in or rule out and monitor, uh, as, as the name implies, is for surveillance of patients. Uh, again, it's to mostly used for a rule out uh, uh, test. There are other compelling uses. Uh, I'll show you a study on uh, adjudication of atypical cytology and also this new concept of, of what COVID brought around, which is the in-home sampling uh, for risk stratification and prioritizing patients uh, to, to coming in, or, or can we manage some patients at least some of the time uh, as outpatients? And we'll have a great discussion afterwards. So again, these are the three tests, the, the monitor, detect, and triage. And you can see the negative predictive value is extremely high uh, for this test in, in all three settings uh, with a sensitivity in the, in the 80 to 95% range for the uh, three different settings. The, uh, these tests are used in different settings, as, as I mentioned, and you can see uh, the, the, the monitor is a rule out test, the detect is a rule in test, and a triage, uh, again, is a rule out test. Uh, used in, in various uh, different settings in hematuria or, or surveillance. Um, I talked about adjudication of atypical cytology or equivocal cystoscopy, and this was a study um, uh, published that was a pooled analysis from all the studies done with CX bladder. It ruled out 35% of the urothelial carcinomas. Importantly, the negative predictive value was 97%. Uh, CX bladder missed only 8.5% of the uh, urothelial carcinomas, whereas cytology missed 63% of the tumors. And you can see that if the patient was CX bladder negative, um, with a, all the patients who had atypical cytology, and there were 153 of them, none of the patients had uh, uh, urothelial carcinoma. So it really correctly adjudicated essentially 100% of the patients who were diagnosed with urothelial carcinoma. Very, very useful test. Uh, when when uh, you have this situation of equivocal cystoscopy or, or uh, atypical uh, uh, cytology. So um, how about enhanced cystoscopy? Uh, we're going to have a talk about this later, so I won't get into it, but obviously um, this increases our uh, ability to detect those uh, tumors that are not well seen with, with white light, and the AUA guidelines supports this. Um, how about other tests? Uh, this is EpiCheck. Uh, this was uh, published uh, a couple of years ago in European Urologic Oncology. It's a DNA methylation test associated with bladder cancer in a panel of 15 genomic markers. And the assay generates a, a, a numerical score sensitivity, uh, again, in the high 60s, specificity 88%. I just show you this as, as one of the, the, the tests. This is one of the, the new uh, tests uh, uh, called Bladder Care. It's meant to be a, a test that can be done at in, at, as, as an in-home uh, urine evaluation. It relies on uh, cell-free and cellular DNA uh, isolation, and, and the, um, the, 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 the test detects uh, methylated bladder cancer biomarkers. And you can see the sensitivity and specificity quite high uh, for this test. And uh, recently, um, uh, in conjunction with uh, my uh, colleagues here at USC, uh, we, um, this study was published looking at the clinical evaluation of bladder care uh, for detection of uh, cancer. There were 136 healthy individuals, 76 bladder cancer patients collected using the in-home test. And you can see the ROC curve there, sensitivity 93.5%, specificity of 92.6%. So pretty good. Again, we're seeing this concept of in-home testing which is fantastic, um, uh, particularly for patients who can't come in uh, at the, at the uh, um, uh, specified uh, time periods, and particularly for lower risk patients where you know, we don't need to see them uh, really that often. Uh, and perhaps we can, uh, those who live further away can be managed uh, this way. 
What about role of biomarkers in patients with the bladder cancer? Uh, uh, we we um, our desperate need of markers for patients who will be upstage at TORBT, particularly high-grade T1 patients, uh, those with high risk, advanced disease at cystectomy or recurrence after cystectomy, predicting resistance to chemotherapy. These are all areas. Uh, don't have much time to get into the details here, but uh, we we really need these markers uh, in in the near future to, to better uh, um, uh, meet the needs of the patients' uh, therapies. I do want to mention Decipher, uh, which uh, many of you are familiar with for prostate, but they do have a Decipher bladder, which predicts which patients may benefit from neoadjuvant chemotherapy. You've seen these bladder uh, molecular subtypes, the luminal, uh, luminal infiltrated, basal, and basal clotin. And the luminal ones have favorable prognosis and limited response to neoadjuvant chemotherapy, whereas the basal has an unfavorable prognosis, but a substantial benefit from neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So perhaps we can use this test to better um, uh, uh, suit patients who, who need chemotherapy and, and go to straight to surgery for those who, who don't. You can see the luminal patients who did not receive neoadjuvant chemotherapy do quite well. That's the top line. And those who are uh, uh, basal, um, if they didn't receive neoadjuvant chemotherapy, their overall survival, you can see uh, the dark brown line is not so good, but with neoadjuvant chemotherapy, those are the ones who benefit most from uh, neoadjuvant chemo, the, the basal uh, patients. So more data is needed. Uh, this was a great study um, and, and got quite a bit of press. And I think we need more validation studies in this, in this realm. How about something very simple? We've been looking at epithelial uh, tumor Markers, the, these are uh, known, very well known to everyone. I think the CA125, the CA199, and CEA. Um, uh, the, these are, uh, again, uh, cellular adhesion molecules are implicated in epithelial invasion and immune system evasion. Unfortunately, not uh, produce uh, uh, um, uh, consistently uh, with bladder cancer, but when it is produced or, or, or secreted, it's very, very helpful to follow. And you can see that when you have normal markers, the recurrence-free survival um, uh, is, is uh, significantly different than when you have elevated uh, markers pre. And we continue to do work in this arena. This is a, a multivariable analysis uh, and and uh, these are uh, uh, these results are independent of the other clinical uh, factors that that we know. What about other uh, response markers? ERCC two has uh, has been um, looked at in a very small study. It's a HeLa case unwinds the DNA for repair, and if you have loss of function, it leads to cisplatin sensitivity because the cisplatin breaks the DNA, and if you have a mutation, you're not repairing the DNA. So you can see in this small study that the, when you had the overall survival for ERCC two mutation patients was was very high, uh, and if you didn't have the mutation, was was quite low. Uh, and that there was a, these were uh, across different uh, uh, patient populations from uh, Fox Chase and, and uh, uh, MSK. So uh, just to conclude, um, I think, uh, you know, we need to identify biomarkers to rule in and out bladder cancer, uh, uh, decrease the frequency and the need for cystoscopies in all cases. And we need to identify patients who are at highest risk for uh, disease progression in non-muscle invasive as well as muscle invasive bladder cancer and who benefits from neoadjuvant chemotherapy, who do we need to give salvage uh, therapies to. So the future is molecular characterization and uh, personalized uh, um, medicine.